This video is sponsored by UPDF. I know I've been covering a lot of the S23 Ultra recently, but the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is still very much present in my day to day. And with the imminent launch of the Galaxy Z Fold 5, it got me thinking, what are the things that really need to improve on the Fold 4, which is already amazing, by the way. With everyone about to go crazy about the iPhone 15, I personally think there's a lot more to be excited about when it comes to the Fold 5. I'm Alex, and I do down to earth tech videos. And before we go any further, is the Fold 4 my main device? No. It's not even a realistic setup here to have both the S23 Ultra and the Fold 4, right? I think there's plenty of reasons to choose one over the other, but that comparison was another video. In today's video, I want you and I to, to dream a little bit, right? Let's think about what Samsung can do to make the Fold even better. Because ideally, I really don't wanna be carrying two massive phones. If you know the channel, you know I've been converted to this form factor last year and there's no going back for me. But having used this phone since launch, I do have some opinions on a few features that could be better. I don't pay a lot of attention to rumors and leaks, so apologies if any of these things have been confirmed or denied by the leakers out there. Actually, if you stick to the end, I have a bit of a bombshell to share with you. Some massive channel has been stealing my content without my authorization, but I appreciate that you might not give a damn about that, so I moved that to the end of the video. I did try to capture some of the leaks and rumors out there that comes from the most trusted leakers, but in general, I ignore most of that stuff until it becomes real. But these are the top things that I love to see on the Z Fold 5. Let me know if you agree or if I missed anything. First is a better display. And what I mean by that can be divided into two categories. One category is the material. I made the mistake of removing the screen protector that it came with, but let's kind of gloss over that. I actually enjoy how it feels to the touch right now. And I don't use the S Pen with it. But when it comes to this material, I can really see how people who are used to other phones might think that this display feels a little bit cheap. And I really can't disagree with that. It's like a contrast of this classy feel on the outside and this really lovely golden accent that I've got here on the page. But when you open, it's like this plasticky feeling on the, on the screen, kind of, you know, even the noise it makes sometimes when it opens. I don't know, you know, so I like to see a better material being used here. I'm not purposely ignoring the hinge, by the way, that deserves its own section, and I'll get onto that in a minute. And the second category is the front display. I think it's really useful already. You can't really use it for a long time, I don't think, but for a quick sort of at a glance use or just for quick messages, this really is good already. Like sometimes you don't wanna open the phone, it might be outside and you just wanna do something one-handed. But what I wanna see improved is not so much the size of the way it feels, but it's how the apps or games may use it. Let me explain what I mean. I can see, for example, how you could quickly use the outer display to check the score on a game that you're playing or some other stats, meaning you'd have a more immersive experience on the game. That's one example. Another one, is how you could use the outer screen to declutter some information when you're using productivity apps. Or, you know, use the outer display to park some highlights, for instance, so that they can be seen at a glance later when the phone is closed. This could be a productivity app or maybe a book or a document that you're reading. Then later you just want to go and check the highlights. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, these are not really display related issues, Alex. You know, what are you talking about? And I'd agree with you. What I am saying, though, is that I think there's a lot that can be done in terms of app developers making the most of the aspect ratio here and the fact that we have effectively three displays to work with. We've seen some really good examples already like the YouTube app itself and Samsung themselves when it comes to multitasking on these displays. But we need more developers to do the same. You know, Instagram still sucks on it, to be honest, and Twitter is all over the place. In general, apps are simply, you know, stretching to fit the screen. There's not a lot out there being creative with this foldable aspect. I mean, it doesn't feel like foldables are going away anytime soon, so it would be good to see developers really adopt this fully and make use of these incredible displays. I have found some really good apps and I'll share that in a best apps for the fold in a separate video that I'm working on. And before we talk about the next improvement, which is a massive one for me, it's probably the most important one for me, which is the camera. Let me share with you just this one fantastic app by today's sponsors, UPDF. UPDF is a great option if you don't want to spend so much money on things like Adobe. I do use them every day, but it does annoy me that a lot of the features are subscription based. But not just that, you know, they can be really expensive and there's no perpetual option, right? At least not as far as I know. So every year I'm paying quite a bit of money to Adobe. Well, UPDF is available on Mac, Windows, iOS and Android. And the best part, you can use UPDF across all those devices with just one single license, you know, and, and they do offer a perpetual option, which I think is great. All the functions are technically free, but, you know, if I'm honest with you, 
it's better to get the license and the license will give you more access to things like, you know, converting files for unlimited time or saving PDFs without a watermark. For a relatively new app, it has a really nice interface already, you know, very friendly to use regardless of the device that you're using and way cheaper than Adobe, like I said, right? As you can see here, this app does pretty much everything that Acrobat does, but it actually goes a little bit further. You know, some features that you get with UPDF are only available on the pro version of Acrobat. So really good value. Always amazes me how dealing with something quite simple like a PDF can be such an expensive affair, right? But I just love how UPDF simplified that. As you can see here, I'm working between my Fold and my MacBook Pro, completely different OSs, right? But a very consistent experience. Love that. Honestly, they could improve a little bit on the interface. Some of the UI can do with an app lift, I'm just being honest. But functionality wise, it's pretty complete already. With my link in the description, you get 50% off the license. And thank you so much UPDF for sponsoring this video. Right, the camera. The most obvious improvement I'd like to see on the Fold 5, and I'm pretty sure you might be thinking the same, is the camera. I know the Fold is more geared towards multitasking and entertainment usage, at least that's what I think they're targeting, but it's 2023 after all, and having a decent camera on any smartphone, whether it's foldable or not, is a must these days, right? I'm not saying the Fold 4 cameras aren't good. I mean, they are actually surprisingly good. But when I see what I'm able to produce with the S23 Ultra, I think, man, we need this camera on the Fold 5, like ASAP. We'll talk about the front-facing camera in a minute, but surely I don't think it's much of a stretch, right, to want the S23 Ultra's camera, or even a better one, that'll be even more amazing, on the Fold 5. I mean, I can kind of see how it might be a challenge due to the sheer size on this module, right? I mean, this, this camera is incredibly big, but if anyone can deliver on this, it's Samsung, right? they're really not afraid to innovate in this space. Now, when it comes to the front-facing camera, well, the bar is quite low. Let's just be honest here, right? Literally, a potato might be doing a better job here. <laughs> and Samsung people, if you're watching, I'm just being honest, you know, the same goes for the camera under the display. Personally, you know, let's cut to the chase here, right? I'd be quite happy for it to be removed, the one in, in the side under the display. It's kind of a hidden camera in there. I don't notice it, but I don't use it either. So get rid of it. If it means getting a main camera as a user, I'd be okay with it. But let me know if you do use this camera in anger, you know, in your meetings or whatever, if you're using that front-facing camera a lot, let me know what you think. Right now, I think it's just on the verge of being acceptable to run a couple of meetings, but if I'm out and about, right? If I'm, if I'm in the office, of course, I'll use my laptop. But yeah, it's just nothing to write home about right now. Now, before we talk about the hinge, which is such an important aspect as well, just a quick reminder that this YouTube thing is really, really hard work, you know? And as you'll see later in this video, there are some issues that we as creators have to deal with that, um, yeah, it's just crazy. This is not my full-time job and I still do pretty much everything myself. It's now, what time is it now? Half past 10 in the evening. I create everything myself from scratch and I love doing it. So if you are enjoying this video so far, a thumbs up will go a long way. It really does, you know, you might think it doesn't, but yeah, it helps me get the channel Discover out there. Ultimately, the more people watching my videos, the better the sponsors, which means I can get more help eventually maybe not even needing sponsors or even better i'll have more time to create videos for you i'm not going to ask you to subscribe for no reason but after this video feel free to take a look on the channel and if you like my stuff it would be awesome if you subscribed let's talk about the elephant in the room another aspect that is quite an obvious one is this hinge right in two different ways actually firstly this infamous crease that we see on the display it could be that improving the display material itself might help reduce that and i really think that this will be a very important update because I actually know some Apple users who have been tempted and have commented in my previous videos that says, I love the idea of the foldable, but I can't get past this hinge. You know, they, they can see it. It's a non-starter for them. So if this crease was a little bit more discreet, it could sway some of those Apple customers over. Which reminds me actually that it would be interesting to see how Google deals with this on the Pixel Fold, right? But I honestly have more confidence right now in how Samsung are dealing with it. According to this Twitter account, Ice Universe, whoever these people are without a real name, uh, Samsung is working on a droplet hinge. There's some other bits in there that he mentioned that, you know, about weight reduction. But what really caught my eye was this new touch screen technology. This actually could mean that we are getting a better material for the screen, which hopefully reduces that effect on the crease, you know, this bumpiness on it, right? Doesn't actually bother me too much, but I know a lot of people that commented on my videos before that this is a major deal breaker for them. And there's a second aspect of the hinge, which is 
it's quite scratchy. You know, it scratches way too easily for me. I really look after this phone. I very rarely take it outside with me. And when I do, it does go on a case. I'll talk about fold accept. I'll talk about accessories for it in a moment, but I'm really surprised that you got this scratch on the hinge because like I said, I treat this with so much care. It's not actually that deep of a scratch, but annoying enough and you know, given how expensive this was when new, yeah, it gets to me a little bit. So yeah, when talking about cases, something that I feel is really lacking is the accessories in general for the fold. I mean, Samsung sells a couple of options, but case manufacturers, they haven't really done a lot for the fold. And I can see why. It's a challenging design and it's very easy to make this extremely bulky if you're not careful. But I do feel that the manufacturers that did produce some fold cases haven't really been creative enough for me. I have reviewed a couple here. Some look great and actually don't add a lot of bulk, but they're not very flexible. Especially if you're like me and you want to change cases from time to time. You know, for now I've got this skin here from the brand and I'm pretty happy with that. You know, is it gonna protect my phone if I drop it? Probably not, actually you won't. But until a decent case comes out, that's what I'm gonna use. Another accessory that I think is lacking is chargers and car mounts in general. You know, it's incredible how wireless chargers just don't seem to be getting this form factor, you know? The best car mount I found is awesome when you're using the Ford Open. Basically makes navigation on your car look like you have a Tesla. Okay, maybe not that good, right? But even this one, when I have the Ford closed, or if I wanna use a different phone, it's kind of limiting in the design, right? It, it kind of, your phone is kind of flapping about there. So awesome idea, but feels like they're really not trying hard enough here. They haven't thought this through very well. And hey, if you've come across any accessories for the fold that you think I should be checking out, please do let me know. In fact, this car mount came from one of you, so shout out to Paul for, for recommending it. The S Pen is a funny one, in a sense that I don't actually use it with a fold, mainly because I don't really use it for a lot of creative apps. But now that I've been using the S23 Ultra as my main smartphone camera and using some of the pro modes like expert raw i can totally see how the s pen might actually be useful for me actually let me show you when using photo editing apps like lightroom being able to change like minute details about the picture about the masks you know playing around with different color profiles contrast brightness the s pen is a delight to use so when the Fold 5 comes out, and hopefully with better cameras, I'll definitely be getting an S Pen with that. I'm assuming that the S Pen is not gonna be included, right? According to some of those rumors, Samsung are really focusing on weight reduction on the Fold 5. So that integrated S Pen that a lot of us are expecting may not come just yet. But as I mentioned with accessories, the S Pen needs a decent case for it. And the one Samsung sells right now just looks a bit odd to me and makes the Fold look I don't know, less elegant. At least that's how I feel. I'd love to see some manufacturer create like a mini keyboard for it. You know, imagine like a, a magic keyboard for the Fold. That would be amazing. There's definitely a gap in there, I think, you know? If any brand manufacturers wanna collab on this idea or any of my other crazy ideas, yeah, my DMs are open. Love that tune. We talked about things here that need improving, but how about things that don't need changing? I think sometimes brands may change too much and actually you know, make the product worse than it was, if that makes sense. The one that comes to mind is the S22 Ultra. I really thought it was a bit of a letdown based on the S21 Ultra previously, but I hope Samsung is sensible on this one though and give us the refinements that we've been wanting without changing some of the good stuff. Like the speakers and microphone. Sure, any improvement is always welcome, but Please, Samsung, don't change them drastically, right? These two things are actually amazing, at least to me, you know, I love how they sound. Whether I'm watching content or maybe recording some audio, you know, the microphone is really good. I mean, I know some of this stuff is subjective, but I did some tests recently and to me, it sounded better than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That video is over here, by the way. And in some scenarios, it was even better than the S23 Ultra as well. So I'm hoping that they leave that alone and only give us refinements. They're already good enough. So yeah, please don't change that. What's this? I don't have hair, what the hell? Another one that doesn't need changing is the biometrics on it, right? I do love the under display fingerprint scanner on the S23 Ultra. That's always been amazing since forever. The side button to me is just a lot more convenient. Before I share my closing remarks, here's that little issue that I had to deal with today. You know, still quite fresh and difficult to talk about. So apologies, it's a little bit off the cuff here. Creating this video sometimes means, you know, I'm spending time away from my family. As I said, it's quite late. This is one of three videos I've got recorded today as well. I'm working really late and over the weekend to make sure that these videos get to you every week. So when a massive channel like this basically steals my content and uses it for their own profit, 
He really made me feel robbed, you know? Um, yeah, not a great, not a great experience. YouTube has a great community. You watching my videos and the lovely comments that I get in every single video is what keeps me inspired to create more. You know, you, you've, you're, you've been amazing. And I know the channel isn't the biggest out there, but I'm very proud of how far we've come because I believe there's no shortcuts when it comes to content creation, right? You know, every bit of footage you see in this video is created with passion and hard work. Now, those videos are no longer available on, on his channel, but I'm also aware that he only made them private, which means any profit he gained from these videos you know, he's not about to hand that back to YouTube. And to be clear for me, it's not about the money that I could potentially have got from this, but it's the principle of it, right? Funny thing is, if he asked me, hey, Alex, you know, I love that bit of footage. Would you mind sharing that with me? I will credit you. To me, that's what YouTube is about. I've given my footage away for free to loads of creators, you know, of all channel sizes. Ultimately, I, and I'm pretty sure pretty much every other creator out there, see this as an opportunity, right? For their viewers to come to my channel and vice versa. He missed. That opportunity he publicly apologized now on twitter and i will move on now creating my own stuff back to the video the other aspect that i don't think needs changing is another one that i think is quite important is the design itself i honestly don't think that a massive change is needed here i know they're talking about making it a bit lighter and thinner bezels yeah i honestly think that this is fine already which is ironic for me right let's face it i'm always moaning about brands that don't innovate enough and here i am hoping that samsung don't change too much but i think that's more of a reflection of how good this phone is already question is is it better than the s23 ultra i think i have answered that question check out this video over here or if you've seen that one already there's a couple of options here that I put together for you. Hope to see you soon. Bye.